Guten Tag. I'm uh, going to try to go through a lot of grammar in a short amount of time to hopefully make it a little easier for you to understand the complexities of German cases and genders, uh, at least giving you an overview so that you can kind of get the idea and get a good start on that part of it. This is a difficult part of German, and so I don't expect you to get everything uh, perfectly. Heck, I make mistakes. Even Germans make some mistakes on this stuff, uh, and they even have debates on it. So uh, I've got nine lessons that uh, kind of break it down into shorter segments, and hopefully with this, it's almost like shoving an entire year of grammar into uh, just nine short lessons, okay? I like to jokingly refer to this as the secret of the German language. I've developed a special chart, and this, this makes it a little bit easier, and so that's kind of my secret, all right? Uh, I call it Risi Nisi Mr. Man Sir Sir. Risi Nisi Mr. Man Sir Sir. That's the secret of the German language, okay? Uh, if you want to pause this video at any time to perhaps write this down, feel free. Notice I have some room in between here to make some notes, so don't shove them too close together if you're going to make notes. Okay, so here's the idea. Uh, what does this chart mean here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like to make a lot of jokes here. So, the chart shows the last letters of certain articles and how they are placed in German sentences. Okay, it's the last letters that we're dealing with, all right? So, if you would uh, want to add, if you're taking notes, you may want to add this information. This column here is masculine, this column is feminine, this column is neuter, this column is plural, okay? So hopefully that'll show up on your screen very well. This row is nominative, that's a fancy word for basically being the subject, okay? This row is accusative, now that's uh, a kind of an odd word as well, uh, but it's basically the direct object and a little bit more. Let's just call it the direct object for now. This row is the dative, another strange word here, but uh, let's just basically call it the indirect object. And if you're not sure of uh, direct and indirect object, I'll be defining those and going through those as well to help you along with that. Uh, this can be more than the direct object. Uh, these three bottom ones can also be objects and prepositions, but we'll get to that in one of our lessons as well. This bottom one, uh, the genitive, is a special possessive form that we really don't have in English. Not exactly, anyway. So we'll use some English to get around it, but we don't have exactly this uh, phrasing in there. So nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive basically a subject, a direct object, an indirect object, and a special possessive form, okay? So, uh, write this one down, and let's see here. The idea is that the letters are the final letters, right, of certain articles. The main ones you already know or should know, assuming you've had some German, are der, die, das, and die for the plural, okay? So der, die, das, and die. Well, do you notice that der ends with R? There you go. D ends with E, there you go. Uh, das ends with S, and there it is. And the plural D is over there. So der is for masculine words, D is for feminine words that are subject, das is neuter uh, for neuter words that are the subject. Okay? So for example, if you have a sentence with a masculine subject, if you have an article, basically that article needs to end in R. At least a lot of articles do. We're going to get to a few exceptions. So in other words, we have der man is here. The man is here. But he knows that man is masculine. I need this R right there. So der man is here. Okay? So, similarly, if you write a sentence with a feminine subject, the article will end with an E. So Frau, as we know, is feminine. So D, where's the E there? D Frau is here. <clears throat> Good. Now the word kind is neuter. Some people have a problem with that, the fact that uh, a kind is neuter. Uh, don't think of a child as being neuter. Think of simply the word kind. Just this word kind is a neuter word. 
So it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a child or anything. It's just that word is a neuter word. Okay? So, because kind is a neuter word, uh, then we need an S in here is thus kind is here. Okay? Good. Now, if we pluralize kind, of course we know that's kinder. Okay? So kinder needs the E because now we're in the plural. If I pluralized any of them, it would be D. D kinder isn't here. D menor isn't here. D frauen isn't here. So once I pluralize man to menor, I need to go over here. Or frau to frauen or kind to kinder. We have to use this E here. Okay? D kinder, D menor, D frauen. Okay, good. So, so far that's pretty easy. And that's the general idea of these. Uh, and these letters show the last letter of articles. Okay, as long as you know if it's masculine, feminine, or neuter, or plural, and as long as you know that it's the subject, or later we'll uh, look at direct and indirect objects, as long as you know these things, you'll know what uh, endings to put on your articles. Okay, so, and technically it is wrong. I uh, myself have uh, led a lot of mistakes still with my students but it really is incorrect to mix these up. You can't just choose any one you want. So for example, if you uh, say das man is here, to an American it may not sound that bad, but to a German it, it, it's pretty bad. Okay, so it should be der man is here, and mixing up with any of these is wrong. So I'm hoping that you'll get that right. Uh, <clears throat> listen, I make mistakes in German too, but there's mistakes and then there's mistakes. Something like this will really make you sound like an uneducated person, so uh, you'll definitely want to not say das man is here, it just sounds too wrong. Okay, well let's try a couple of samples and if you got that here. Well, we have Lehrerin, I'm sure you know that anything that ends with I-N makes it a female. Well, that makes it very easy. It's feminine, there's our E, therefore D. D Lehrerin ist schön. Okay. Die Lehrerin is schön. How about Hund? Now, do you know the gender of Hund? Okay. Again, don't worry that it's, you know, a dog. What is the gender of the word Hund? The gender of the word. Well, the gender of the word Hund is masculine. Okay. So, uh, we need that R then. So, der Hund is groß. Der Hund is groß. How about Un? Un, a chicken. Okay. Un, what gender is un? Okay, that one happens to be neuter. So with that, we'll need that s right there, and we have das un is dick. Okay, now uh, you're probably saying at this point, how in the world do I know what the genders are of all these words? Well, the unfortunate news is the bulk of that is going to be memorization. I do have some tricks. And the more you keep working with this, uh, your guesses can get better. But the, the true answer is, when you start to learn new vocabulary, you're going to need to learn whether a noun is masculine, feminine, or neuter, and what the plural looks like, so you'll know when it's plural. Uh, I have some hints coming up in these lessons as well. Okay? Now, what about this one? Tisha. Well, there's a couple of tricks here for you. This is a dead giveaway, the zint. Okay, zint is R, so uh, it's not table, but tables. The tables are brown. Well, tables, plural, well, that makes it pretty easy. Once we know it's plural, it's uh, D. If you're curious, the word tish, singular, would be masculine. But this is a plural one, so we don't have to worry about that. Tisha. Okay, good. And then, now, uh, one that always gets people, if you're not used to this, is the word Mädchen. Mädchen, of course, is a girl, and everybody's automatic guess is that uh, that is feminine, okay? Well, I know why you would think that. I would think that, too, I suppose. However, again, just ignore the fact that it's a girl. Ignore that fact. All you have to concentrate on is the word Mädchen. And you're going to find out that anything that ends with C-H-E-N, anything that ends with C-H-E-N is automatically neuter, no matter what. So, the C-H-E-N just makes this word a neuter word, 
no matter that it re refers to a girl or not, okay? So that's a neuter word. Knowing that, here's our S, das Mädchen ist hübsch. Okay, so das. Good. So, that's just the way the word uh, uh, works. I've got tricks that I'll be showing you here in a little bit. If you want, you can write these down too. This may be worth noting on some paper. Uh, here's the first trick for you. Anything that ends with C-H-E-N or L-E-I-N is automatically neuter. Okay? In fact, uh, I probably shouldn't tell you this on YouTube, but uh, I cheated when I was in college a little bit. If I was taking some sort of a grammar test and I'd forgotten what gender a certain noun was, uh, I would cheat and add C-H-E-N to the noun and I knew know then that it was uh, neuter. Okay? Um, for example, here's the tafel. Tafel is the board, right? The board, in this case a whiteboard. Okay? And if I ask you right now, quick, what's the gender of tafel? You may not know, okay? That's kind of a tough one, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, I just wound out the A, a tafel, add C-H-E-N, I get table C-N. Well, table C-N is neuter. Now, that means a small board. Both the C-H-E-N and L-E-I-N, those make it small. So table C-N technically is a small little board, but hey, who's going to argue that, okay? If I make it table C-N, it's automatically neuter, end of the story, I'm good to go. If you're curious, tafel is actually feminine, D tafel. Who would have known? Okay, here's another trick. Anything that ends in I-N, okay, is automatically feminine. Those are usually professions or people like Lehrerin, uh, Schülerin, Freundin, etc. So those are always uh, females themselves, those are people, always people. And it's always feminine, so always. And then, one more trick is anything that ends in an E, I should say any noun that ends with an E, is usually feminine. You know, nine times out of ten, maybe more than that, okay? So if you see a noun that ends with E, like Eka, Fane, uh, those are usually feminine, okay? So those are some good tricks to know. So, by a dish line, dish line. Remember that L-E-I-N makes it automatically neuter, okay? So we need an S, das, tisch line. Tisch alone happens to be masculine, but once I add the line, it's neuter, okay? So das, tisch line. Uh, table cien, we just did that one, okay? So that makes it again neuter, so das, table cien. Well, there's our I-N, that's a female person, and it's obviously feminine. So there we go, E, D, Verkäuferin. Okay? Die Verkäuferin ist fleißig. Okay? Uh, Schule, well, that ends with E, so your guess is going to be feminine, and you will get it right if you do so. Die Schule is fantastisch. Again, it doesn't work every time, but it works most of the time. Okay, I'll show you an example where it doesn't, right here. Okay, Junge ends with an E, and yes, I said that usually if it ends with an E, it's feminine, but usually does not mean always. So in this case, it doesn't. Junge is a boy, boy is masculine, I need that R. So, der Junge ist grob. Okay, der Junge ist grob. Great. Now, uh, there's going to be some more tricks on that, but that's at least a beginning of it uh, for the first lesson. And there we go. Uh, I'll have eight more lessons for you that hopefully will straighten this out.